What the heck? Togon. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna directly contradict what I said I was going to do or not going to do in the last video, which was I said I'm not going to do anything regarding the law of tangents or the law of cotangents, and I'm just going to completely um, disregard that previous statement, and it's all going to be connected to the law of sines and cosines as well. Of course these things are connected. If they weren't, trigonometry would be kind of stupid. Um, but I am going to investigate today how to prove the law of tangents, and I'm going to show a very, very neat formula that relates a product and sum of three different tangents at the same time, and it's very, very lovely. Um, so in the next video I'm going to do the same for the law of cotangents and an analogous thing about three cotangents and a product of those and a sum of three cotangents. And, and after that, now that we've then, now that we'll then have proved all four trigonometric laws of those things, we will use them to demonstrate a very, very neat um, area formula for triangles called Heron's formula, which has been known since the time of somebody that was named Heron which means it's probably old. I'm gonna guess Greek, I have no idea. Um, I care more about the math than who made it. Uh, but yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna just cover the last two laws over the next two videos, and then we're going to do a couple proofs of Heron's formula using some of those laws. All right, so let's do this. Today is the law of tangents. Okay, obviously I can't do this without my trusty cup of joe. Always gotta stay Energetic. Where's my? There it is. We're going to prove the law of tangents. So I'd say this is about the least useful of them, though I did make the claim before that no one's ever even heard of them. Um, although that was sort of flippant. I obviously understand that different aspects, different facts in mathematics can be used in very different contexts. Um, it's just that the law of sines and cosines are much more ubiquitous than tangents and cotangents. But this one, I, I believe we're actually not going to be using after this. I just thought, why not be completionist and prove all of the laws? So, we need to start with a fact that we know already. It is the law of sines. So I need to draw a triangle. And we have A, B, C for the sides, and the opposite angles alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay? Now, I'm going to pick two sides and two angles at random, because this is a general argument. You could, of course, pick any two sides. But I'm going to define the number d to be equal to um, a divided by the sine of alpha, which, of course, according to the law of sines, is also equal to b divided by the sine of beta, right? We already proved that, so we, we can just sort of say it now. b divided by the sine of beta. Right, so this, I'm just defining d to be these numbers. Of course, it's also equal to c divided by the sine of gamma, but we only need two of the sides for the law of tangents, and like I said, you can pick any two sides. This is an arbitrary, uh, this, is a, this is a general argument. And so what we're going to do is we're simply going to now consider the values of a and b. Well, because we've defined d to be uh, the side divided by the sine of the opposite angle, we now have that a is equal to, I'm just going to delineate here, we now have that a is equal to d times the sine of alpha, right? We just multiply the sine of alpha over, and we get that a is equal to d times the sine of alpha. And likewise, we get that b is equal to d times the sine of beta, right? So those two facts now, we, after we've defined the constant d, we now have values in terms of d and the angles for a and b, the side lengths a and b. And so what we're going to do is we're going to simply write a neat little equation now. So we're going to write a minus b over, and I'm just going to delineate this again, a minus b over a plus b. Well, what the, could that be? All we have to do is replace it with our definitions here. So we have d times the sine of alpha, because that's a, right? We, we solve for a in terms of d and alpha, minus d times the sine of beta, divided by d times the sine of alpha, plus d times the sine of beta. Right? And I think you can see, very clearly, that there is a common factor of this number d in the numerator and denominator, which means we can simply cancel it, and we end up with sine of alpha minus sine of beta over sine of alpha plus sine of beta. So uh, I'm going to sort of assume a fact now, but I'm not really assuming it, because another very awesome, probably one of the most 
if not the most popular solo YouTuber for mathematics, Black Pen Red Pen, in uh, an older video of his, managed to prove two very interesting facts. He proved, and I'll write these in a different color, and I will write them up here. Oh my god, we're revealing that the board actually has an edge. So he proved a relationship that has to do with the sums and products of signs. This is sort of the sum to product formula, because we're going to need that. He also proved a product to sum formula, which is not the opposite of this necessarily, but it's a sort of a, a, an also a neat formula. But we need this fact here. We need the fact that the sine of alpha plus or minus the sine of beta is equal to 2 times the sine of alpha plus or minus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha minus plus beta over 2. So this is the sine sum to product formula. And we need that here because we have sine of alpha minus beta, sine of beta and sine of alpha plus sine of beta in this formula down here. So if you want justification for this fact, go look up um, black pen, red pen, sum to product, and you will find a proof for this statement here. I'm just going to take it for granted now because it's already been demonstrated in another video and I'd like to spend time on what I'm proving here. So we just need to rewrite this now because we know how to rewrite it. So I'm going to erase this here and we're going to work on the rest of it up here. So we now have that the length A minus the length B divided by the length A plus the length B is equal to sine of alpha minus sine of beta divided by sine of alpha plus sine of beta. So I'm going to erase all this now and we're going to continue the proof. A minus B over A plus B is equal to the sine of alpha minus the sine of beta over the sine of alpha plus the sine of beta. And all we're going to do is use the sum to product formula that we have just sort of taken for granted to rewrite this statement. So we just wrote it, sine of alpha minus sine of beta can be rewritten as 2 times the sine of alpha minus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. And sine of alpha plus sine of beta, which is in the denominator, can be written as 2 times the sine of alpha plus beta over 2 times the cosine of alpha minus beta over 2. Again, if you want justification for these two claims, just watch Black Pen Red Pen's video. He does a very good proof of it. Uh, but notice, this is not the law of sines or cosines. This is the law of tangents. And you'll notice that uh, these twos will just cancel, right? 2 divided by 2 is 1. But we have sine of something divided by cosine of that same thing which is, means this fraction here, this thing divided by this thing, is just the tangent of the inside. So we have currently, a, don't forget that this is a minus b over a plus b, so we have a minus b over a plus b, oops, that's beta, over a plus b is equal to, well, sine of alpha minus beta over 2 divided by cosine of alpha minus beta over 2 is nothing but the tangent of alpha minus beta over 2 divided by cosine of alpha plus beta over 2 divided by sine of alpha plus beta over 2 is just the cotangent of alpha plus beta over 2. But cotangent is 1 over the tangent, which means we have the tangent of alpha plus beta over 2 in the denominator. And this, my good friends and audience, is the law of tangents. So given any triangle with side lengths a, b, c, and opposite angles respectively alpha, beta, and gamma, you can pick any two sides, in this case I just picked A and B, and their respective angles alpha and beta, but you could have picked B and C, A and C, any two sides you want. You can deduce that it must be true that the side length A minus B divided by B plus A is equal to the tangent of the opposite angles alpha minus beta divided by 2 over tangent of alpha plus beta over 2. This is the law of tangents, very very good. And that is the proof of that statement. Now I'm going to prove something involving these three angles inside of a triangle, which always add up to 180 degrees or pi radians. So now that we've proven the law of tangents, I'm going to take a step aside and prove a very, very, very pretty relationship. So the statement that we're going to prove is, given some triangle, we don't really need to care about the sides, with angles alpha, beta, and gamma, Right? In a triangle, the angles always add up to pi radians. So we know that alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to pi, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to solve for one of them, namely gamma. It doesn't matter which one we solve for, but we're going to solve for gamma. And so we get that gamma is equal to pi minus alpha minus beta, right? 
Very good. And now we're going to take the tangent of both sides. So we get that the tangent of gamma is equal to the tangent of pi minus alpha minus beta. What this actually is, is the same thing as the tangent, I'm using a different pen color now, of, what is it? It's negative the quantity alpha plus beta minus pi. So essentially, it's take the input, shift it to the right by pi, and then reflect that entire function over the x-axis by multiplying by negative 1. And what you end up with is just the negative of the tangent of your input. So this is really just negative tangent of alpha plus beta. So I'm going to rewrite that here. And what we get is tangent of gamma is equal to the negative tangent of alpha plus beta. You can investigate that on your own. I'm not going to really belabor that point. This is a true fact. If you do the manipulations and the transformations, you'll end up at this. And <clears throat> all we have to do here now is use the angle sum formula that we proved for tangent quite a while ago. <clears throat> and we get that the tangent of gamma is equal to the negative of the, of the sum formula here. And we get negative tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta divided by 1 minus the tangent of alpha times the tangent beta. That's just using the angle sum formula. And the negative up here is from this negative right here. What's good about this now is we can cancel uh, the negatives. So this becomes that, and this becomes plus, And we can just switch the difference in the denominator, because when you multiply something by negative 1, the difference flips. So we have the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta minus 1 in the denominator. What can we do now? We simply multiply this thing over, and we end up with something very, very nice. So watch what happens here. We're going to multiply this denominator over to the other side, and we're going to get the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta minus 1 times the tangent of gamma is equal to tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta, right? But now if we just distribute this tangent of gamma in, we'll end up with tangent of alpha times tangent of beta times tangent of gamma minus tangent of gamma equals tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta. But then, of course, we can just add that term over, and look what happens. We add tangent of gamma over, and we get this beautiful, beautiful relationship that if you have three angles who are all together supplementary, right, They all three of them add up to pi, then we have the beautiful fact that the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta times the tangent of gamma is equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta plus the tangent of gamma. It's lovely. Look at that fact. Isn't that just beautiful? And it has to be that alpha, beta, and gamma together add up to pi. In other words, they're all the angles inside of a triangle. And there's going to be a very, very similar relationship using uh, cotangent, and we're going to see that when we do the video proof of the law of cotangents. So thank you for watching, everybody. It's been a pleasure to do these two little facts for you. And stay tuned for more cool math. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.